So Deontay Wilder has let America, Team USA, the United States, home of the brave, he let us down again. You know, I remember five years ago uh, when I first saw Deontay Wilder, a lot of people uh, had, had, had a lot of high hopes for him. They were saying stuff like, you know, he's going to be the next great American heavyweight. And they were saying this because of his knockout percentages. You know, I think at the time he had maybe 25, 26 knockouts, you know, and of course he knocked everybody out. Uh, but of course he had that resume back then uh, that hasn't really improved since then. But a lot of people back then were saying this and uh, a lot of people kept saying, giving excuses like, you know, he needs to, uh, he, he he's, he's working on his craft. Like I remember in 2013, like he was fighting guys like Nikolai Furfa, Sergey Lee Hovillage, uh, Ollie Harrison. And a lot of people were saying, well, and, and I remember a lot of people back then wanted him to fight Vladimir Klitschko, but the excuse was, well, he's learning his craft. Even some uh, people on TV who are boxing analysts were saying stuff like this. I remember this. Uh, I told my story of Deontay Wilder. I had a lot of high hopes for him. But when he uh, defended his belt against Eric Molina, that's when I kind of like stopped uh, taking Deontay Wilder like... I stopped basically defending him. You know, I've, I've told this story before. I used to be a uh, Wilder, uh, big Wilder. Uh, I used, to, I guess I used to have high hopes for Wilder. I really wasn't a f big fan of him. I was a fan, but maybe I had uh, some of that patriotic, uh, you know, I had, I was patriotic. I had that patriotic uh, fan in me, so I wanted him to be successful. Well, Wilder, uh, you know, he's really letting us down. As a American boxing fan, man. He really is. Especially if you consider, like, the history of American heavyweights. You know, America has produced some of the greatest heavyweights. You know, a lot of people talk about guys like, you know, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. But if you look at the history of, of, of America, America has produced several heavyweights. You know, Jack Johnson back in 1908. Oh, uh, my God. Jack, Jack Dempsey. Joe Lewis reigned as heavyweight champion for 11 years. You know, Rocky Marciano, Floyd Patterson, Sonny Liston, Muhammad Ali, a.k.a. Cassius Clay, uh, Joe, Smoking Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Larry Holmes reigned that for seven years, Mike Tyson, uh, Riddick Bowe, Evander the Real Deal Holyfield. You know what I'm saying? America, for the longest time, America, uh, American heavyweights were really the kingpins of the heavyweight divisions. Literally from like 18, literally from like the start of like the 19th century right? at, at, or the 18th century, American heavyweights were the ruler of the heavyweight division. They were, I mean, obviously there were other guys from other countries who were heavyweight champions, but the dominant force in the heavyweight division for, for many years, you know, for like 80 years were American heavyweights, you know, throughout the 1930s, throughout the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and maybe up into the early 90s, American heavyweights were the dominant force in the heavyweight division. Then, of course, it started to change more guys from other countries started to really t take over the heavyweight division especially like guys from you know the across the pond guys like Lennox Lewis came along guys like uh you know the eastern europeans came along it started to change and now american don't really the americans don't really dominate the heavyweight division but if anyone knows anything about boxing you will know that america used to be the dominant force in the heavyweight division you know again you go back 30 years ago you know, 40 years ago, it was all Americans. Uh, so it's really embarrassing when you see someone like Deontay Wilder. Uh, because, like like I said, America has so much rich history. Uh, and it's embarrassing when you see Deontay Wilder. Even before this all, you know, I'm not even talking about the fact that he turned down uh, 10 million against Anthony Joshua. I'm not even talking about the fact that he's saying, I will only fight you, Anthony Joshua, if I get us 50 
uh, 50 50 split. And if not, I won't fight you. So he's basically pricing himself out and saying, and using that as like an excuse to not fight Anthony Joshua. I'm just saying in general, like even before that, way before Anthony Joshua got big, he should have fought someone who was respectable, right? Way before Anthony Joshua. You know, way before Anthony Joshua. You know, I don't buy this whole excuse that you, you have to fight, uh, uh, you know, 150 guys just to prepare yourself and get yourself good in boxing. That's that's an excuse. Brian Jennings had the same exact experience that uh, Deontay Wilder had, but he didn't fight, you know, 50 guys before he fought Vladimir Klitschko. He fought Vladimir Klitschko with like 20 fights. Why didn't Brian Jennings have that excuse? Because Brian Jennings wants to challenge himself. Simple as that. Another guy, uh, Gerard Washington, when he fought Deontay Wilder, you know, he didn't have, you know, 39 fights. He had 18 fights. He wants to challenge it. Even Jarrell Big Baby Miller, another American, um, you know, he's already fighting guys that he, 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 he's fighting guys he's supposed to be fighting. Do you see Jarrell Miller fighting guys like Marius Walk? And Gerard Washington with like 59 fights. No, you see him fighting guys like Marius Walk and Gerard Washington uh, with less than 20 fights. So he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. That's why I respect and I and I and I admire more guys like Gerard Washington. I mean, excuse me, like uh, Jarrell Miller, Big Baby Miller, and even Brian Jennings. You know, than someone like Wilder because they're challenging themselves much earlier in their careers. Uh, I don't get it. It's like it's like every time Deontay Wilder is set to fight someone big, something bad happens. It's almost like someone is preventing Wilder from ever challenging himself. Whether it's him, whether it's his team, you know, when it came to Bavekian, something happened. He Bavekian got caught with drugs. You know, maybe he was a drug too. He probably was. Didn't happen. Then this whole thing with Louis Ortiz with the whole blood pressure didn't happen. Uh, then now there's a. While they're pricing himself out, saying he don't want to fight Joshua unless he gets that, you know, 50-50 split. He's pricing himself out. He knows he's not going to get the 50-50 split. So, in other words, he won't fight Anthony Joshua because he's never going to get the 50-50 split. So, once again, and now his, his fans are going to say, oh... Well, it wasn't Wilder's fault. It wasn't Wilder's fault. Eddie Hearn never gave him a 50-50 split. So, it wasn't Wilder's fault. You can't blame Wilder. Sorry for the dogs if you hear them in the back. They're annoying. You know how dogs are. They don't stop barking. But that's what his fans are going to say. His fans are going to use that as an excuse. Well, Deontay Wilder, it wasn't Wilder's fault. Eddie Hearn didn't want to give him the 50-50 split. That's just as bad as when Riddick Bowe threw his uh, uh, WBC heavyweight belt in the trash saying, I'm, I'm not going to fight uh, Lennox Lewis. I'll, you know, he could be a trash can. So he vacated it and threw it in the trash. That's embarrassing. I mean, it, this is not as embarrassing as that because that's embarrassing. But he might as well do that. He might as well throw his WBC belt in the trash because he's basically saying, I'm not fighting you, dude, unless you give me that money. And the sad part is, is his fans are going to defend him and they're going to say, you know, he, Eddie Hearns should have given him that money. It's as if Wilder's just content on fighting guys he knows he could beat. I don't, you know, that's what it is. He knows he could beat these guys. And the crazy thing is... I really don't know if I don't think he wants to duck Anthony Joshua because of course he wants to pay a day. Who wouldn't want to pay a day? What what annoys me is that he doesn't want to take the ten million. I remember when when uh Anthony I mean when Deontay Wilder didn't fight uh Black, I mean excuse me um what's his name Dillian White and a lot of people were and he and he, and he turned down four million and a lot of people were saying why would he go to England defend his belt for four million? Why would he go there? Four million to defend against this guy. He needs, you know, he's a champion. They need to pay him more. If they pay Charles Martin five million to fight uh, Anthony Joshua, they should pay De Deontay Wilder more than five million to go to England to fight Dillian White. The problem was Dillian White isn't Anthony Joshua. Well, now when it comes to Anthony Joshua, they're paying him more than they are for Charles Martin. When Charles Martin went to England to defend his belt against Anthony Joshua, they paid him what five million. They're paying Deontay Wilder double, right? Ten million. So no one could say, "Oh, you can't use that excuse." Oh, Wilder is a bigger name than Charles Martin. He should be getting paid more. You can't use that excuse because he is getting paid more. He's getting paid, uh, you know, ten million, but he turned it down. That's what I'm saying. Wilder doesn't. Wilder, I guess he, in a sense, he's trying to be smart. He knows if he loses to Anthony Joshua, he'll never get a bigger payday. So he's trying to, in a sense. 
milk it. He's trying to milk it and get as much money as he possibly can for this fight. He's trying to milk it. Okay? He's trying to milk it. And if he can't milk it, then it's too risky for him. So he won't take the fight. That's what it is. It's kind of like with Amir Khan and Kell Brook. Amir Khan is always milking. You know, he wants to get the higher percentage. You know how Amir Khan always wants the higher... He's trying to act like I'm the star. Even though he's been irrelevant for like a year and a half. For like two years almost. But he knows that's a risky fight. Him versus uh, Kell Brook. He knows it's risky, you know? So this is why he, he he's trying to get as much money as possible. Because he knows that might be his last biggest payday. I mean, let's be real. If he loses to Gail Brook, that might be Amir Khan's last biggest payday. And and, and, and Amir Khan's already at the end of his career. He's already said he's going to just fight for like two, three more years and he retires. You know? So, that's all it is really. I think... I don't think Wilder's scared of Anthony Joshua, but I think he uh, he just wants to milk the belt. But in the process, he's embarrassing us as American boxing fans and, 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 and all boxing fans from around the world. Because he's giving other boxing fans ammunition to criticize him. You know? To criticize him and call him a coward. You know how many comments I received in my channel saying, ah, I told you Wilder was a coward. I told you Wilder was a coward. I told you he didn't really want to fight. I received several boxer fans telling me this on my channel. I got the comments on my, in my, in my, in my, I got all the comments, man. I'll show you, man. I got all these comments and I can't blame them. I can't be, I can't like say, what are you talking about? You know, I can't say you're lying. <sighs> it's going to be really sad if uh, this fight doesn't happen next year. Because it's really supposed to happen next year. Can you imagine if it doesn't happen next year? And like I said, if, if this fight doesn't happen, it's just it's going to be worse. I feel like this fight... I said this a long time ago on my original McGregor channel. I said, these guys have to fight each other before they lose because the reason why this fight's so big and the reason why people are really and the reason why a lot of boxing fans are interested in it around the world is because they're both undefeated and they're both punchers that's what's catching the imagination of boxing fans holy cow both of these guys are undefeated they're both punchers all they gotta do is land someone's gonna get knocked out and because they're undefeated that's the big selling point and them being undefeated is a big selling point for them. But but let's say one of the, these guys, let's say they stall the fight because Wilder keeps saying, I'm not fighting Anthony Joshua until this. And let's say years, years pass. One of these guys is going to end up losing. And guess what? It's going to, it's going, pe boxing fans will lose interest. They're going to be like, okay, I'm not going to see this fight now. Both of these guys have lost. You know, it's not as appealing to me. You know, it's not as appealing to me. So... That's what I'm saying. These guys really have to fight before that shit happens. I mean, look at Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Manny Pacquiao. If that would have happened earlier, they probably would have made more money because there would have been more interest. It would have there would have been more uh, boxing fans interested in it. But they, they waited so long that by the time they fought, they were both really past their prime. I mean, it still did very well. Obviously, financially, these both of these guys made millions upon millions of dollars. I believe Mayweather made like two hundred million. I believe Pacquiao made like a hundred million. So both of these guys were, you know, hit the jackpot that night. But still, let's say the fight would have happened four years earlier, like 2011, 2012. they probably would have made even more money because at that at that time they were younger and they didn't have, you know, especially Pacquiao had not lost to Marquez and stuff. So it would have been more appealing for boxing fans to want to tune in and pay pay per view to watch that fight. So this is the case with like, and, and Deontay Wilder is like what thirty two years old now, you know. And then if they wait long, and let's say Wilder gets old, and let's say he were to lose, then they'll just discredit Anthony Joshua and say, well, you know, Wilder's old. You know, he 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 he, he You know, he he's thirty five now. And the same thing goes for Wilder. Let's say in, they fight in two three years, and Anthony Joshua has lost since then, they're not going to give Wilder credit. They're going to say, well, Anthony Joshua was damaged goods. That's why it's best for them to fight now when they're both young and undefeated because they will get the most credit right now, whoever wins. Even, of course, there's going to be people out there saying not giving the guys credit because there are obviously boxing fans out there that just don't like the guy and they will never give them credit. But 
the real boxer fans will be like, okay, I'm going to give you credit, man, because you, you beat him. You beat him in his prime, too, you know? Another thing, Wilder has to realize, if Eddie Hearn is telling you that you're not worth 50% of the, of the person, you're not, right? Let's be realistic. If, if you're not worth that now, what if you lose, Wilder? If you're not worth that being undefeated now, what if you lose? If you lose, you're definitely not going to be worth that. So imagine you're getting offered $10 million, but imagine in two years you lose like twice. Now you're not even going to be offered $10 million. Now you're going to be offered like $7 million because you lost now you know, and your stock went down. So I just don't know. I don't know why you would turn down $10 million. That is a, a really great uh, purse. It is. I think it is. Well, maybe for me because you know I'm you know I've never seen ten million dollars, so I guess for me that's a great purse. I will take it. But again, I think Wilder's just trying to milk his belt. He's trying to make as much money as possible. Uh, plus, you have to like it's all about really confidence. You know, if if, if Wilder gets, to, uh, I mean, l l let me put myself in Wilder's position. Let's say I'm thinking, okay, if I get the ten million, right? If I if I get the jackpot. Then let's say I knock out. If I'm confident in myself and I know I can knock out Anthony Joshua, I'll knock him out, right? I'll knock out this guy. Then if I knock him out, guess what? Now I have all the belts, man. I have, well, not all the belts, not Joseph Parker's belt, but I have the WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO uh, hey, uh, championships of the world. So he has, what, three belts? Three out of the four belts? He's going to be the A side. Now Wilder could be like, okay. Now I want instead. Of, now I'm getting twenty million. You want a rematch? Because there's probably going to be a rematch clause. You want a rematch, Anthony Joshua? You got to bow down to me. You and Eddie Hearn got to do what I want you to do. You have to go to Bama because you know that this fight will probably take place. Because let's say the fight happens, they'll probably go to the UK, probably Wembley, right? Probably in a big open arena, right, with like ninety thousand people, boxing fans, right, in a soccer arena or football arena, right? I believe you call it football in the UK. Yeah, you, you like in the US we call it soccer, and in the UK you call it football. But yeah, right. Then, uh, but in the rematch, who knows? Maybe Eddie Hearn will be like, "Hey, you won Wilder, but you'll still make more money fighting in Wembley." Or, or maybe Wilder, because he's the A side, he'll be like, "Hey, I want you to come to the Barclays Center because I think Wilder feels more comfortable fighting in you know obviously America and where he's from, and I and I think Wilder likes fighting in in." Uh, you know, the Barclays Center. And I think he also likes fighting in uh, his home state of, uh, you know, Alabama. So he'll probably have the fight happen in Alabama, Bama for life, or even the Barclays Center. You know? And then he'll get paid, like I said, $20 million. He'll, he'll have all, he'll, he'll have the high ground. You know, and imagine if he knocked out Anthony Joshua again. You know? Or even better, imagine if he loses to Anthony Joshua. Let's say they have a rematch Let's say he wins the first fight. Let's say he has a rematch, and let's say he lo let's say he loses to Anthony Joshua. In the rematch, he gets paid more, twenty million, because he beat Anthony Joshua in the first time, right? Well, let's say he loses to Anthony Joshua. Well, guess what? Now they could have a trilogy. <laughs> now that's another big payday. Now in the trilogy, uh, because Anthony Joshua beat Wilder, now they have a trilogy. Now, well, guess what, buddy? Now Wilder's getting another. 10 50 million dollar payday so that's going to be three back-to-back -back paydays the first time is 10 million the second time is like 20 million because he won and he, and then for the trilogy that's like another maybe uh 10 20 million so after all is said and done wilder would have made close to 50 million dollars plus you know pay-per-view buys and all that at you know sponsored all that he would have made about 50 million dollars you know he would have been set for life then he could truly retire after that you know it's over after that and he'll be what under 35 years old, be worth 50 million, you know, so, you know, I think Wilder has to smarten up. I just, I want Wilder to uh, realize that boxing fans aren't dumb. They see what you do. You know, we do research. We look at what you do. We see your resume. You know, hardcore boxing fans know the history of other boxers. That's why we respect other boxers from the past. Even if they've been retired for like 50 years, we respect them because we see their history. We see what they've done. Uh, who cares if you lose? You know, that's another thing Wilder has to realize. I get it. If he loses, people will troll him. I understand. But at the same time, people will also respect them. If Wilder were to lose, let's say he were to lose, but let's say he were to give a good account of himself and try 
people will respect him. Even the channels out there that people think that don't like Wilder, they'll make videos saying, man, I respect Wilder. I respect him because he lost, but I respect him. I mean, look at me. I made a video saying that Saddam Ali would get schooled. Schooled against Miguel Cotto. Because I'm a big Miguel Cotto fan. But look at what happened when Saddam Ali beat Miguel Cotto. Did I make a video trashing Saddam Ali? No. I, I made him... I gave him his props, man. Because I... Because he, he won. Fair and squares. You know... Obviously, there's some channels out there that they don't do that. If, if, if a guy, they say he's going to lose, loses, or let's say he loses, but he, he tries, they'll, they'll still trash him. I'm not one of those people, man. I'll still give a guy credit, even if I think he's going to lose. And I'll give Wilder credit. Like, if I saw Wilder go in there and, let's say, like I said, both ways. If I saw Wilder go in there and lose against the top guy, right, but he tried and he really put effort, I'd be like, you know what? I got to give him respect. He lost, but he tried. Whether it's Anthony Joshua, whether it's any heavyweight, I'll give him respect, you know. Because at least he tried, man. At least he tried. I mean, look at Brian Jennings. Brian Jennings lost to Vladimir Klitschko, but he tried in that fight. It wasn't like he just... I mean, just compare Brian Jennings versus Vladimir Klitschko to David Hay versus Vladimir Klitschko. David Hay, in my opinion, didn't take as much risk as Brian Jennings. Brian Jennings took more risk against David Hay. I mean, against Vladimir Klitschko than David Hay. He was trying more. He failed, but he had some success in that fight. He was catching him. Even against uh, Luis Ortiz. Look at that fight. Brian Jennings was being very aggressive against Luis Ortiz. He was trying. Well, I think what Deontay Wilder should do is sit down and watch a tape of Evander Holyfield. Watch a documentary of Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield is a guy I've always had a lot of respect because Evander Holyfield, the real deal Holyfield, is a guy that fought everybody. Like, he fought everybody. The do for everybody. I don't think Evander. You, I don't think you could say Evander Holyfield ducked anyone. He fought everybody. You know, always challenging himself, and he would get dropped too. He would get dropped. He would get put on his backside. He would get hurt, but he constantly fought. And that's why, if you look at Evander Holyfield, a lot of people didn't appreciate him early in his career. They thought he was a fake, you know, because they thought Mike Tyson was the real heavyweight. And when Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas and Evander Holyfield beat Buster Douglas and became the unified heavyweight champion of the world, a lot of people turned, uh, you know, they, 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 a lot of uh, boxing fans, American boxing fans, didn't respect Holyfield because they were like, the real heavyweight champion of the world is Mike Tyson. And of course, Mike Tyson went to jail and everything. And you guys know the rest if you know your boxing history. But Evander Holyfield, eventually, boxing fans, American boxing fans, started showing him appreciation. Why? Because even in his losses to guys like Riddick Bowe, um, he fought everyone and he always tried. Evander Holyfield was always in exciting fights because he was try He always tried. You know, of course, he eventually beat Mike Tyson when Mike Tyson came out of prison again. So he truly was the real deal, and that's how I always liked Evander Holyfield as a as a uh, you know fighter uh, because he always tried, man. And it's kind of sad because you know Evander Holyfield is big on. Uh, what's his name? Deontay Wilder, because I, th I believe they're from the same place, or I believe Evander Holyfield's from Atlanta, Georgia. Or was he born in Alabama? I believe he's from Atlanta, Georgia, but, you know, Wilder should take notes. You know, if, if Evander Holyfield was around during this time, he would have fought Anthony Joshua. He would have fought Dominic Brazil. He would have fought Dillian White. He would have fought Deontay Wilder. He would have fought Jarrell Big Miller. He would have fought all these dudes. And whether he would have beaten them all or not, doesn't matter. The point is, he would have fought them, you know? So I think that's what uh, Deontay Wilder should do. He should take notes from past great heavyweights. And, uh, you know, again, he says it himself. It's all about legacy. Well, do it. If it's about legacy, be fight, fight all these guys. Fight Dillian White. Fight Jarrell Miller. Fight Anthony Joshua. Fight all these dudes. But I get it. It's about money because that's life's about money. I get it. We all want money. So I get it. Father says it's about legacy, but it's really about money. Uh, I get it. I can't hate on that. I can't hate. If I was Deontay Wilder, I would, I would understand. I'd be like, yo, I could make, why well, I make 10 million when I could make, you know, 30 million or 20 million. I get it. He wants to make as much money as he possibly can against, uh, Deont against uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, he realizes this is probably the jackpot of his entire life. 
he will probably never make more money in this fight. Whether he wins or loses this fight, he's probably never going to make more money in, again in his life. Unless he wins and, and in the rematch, he'll make more money, right? So I get it. But he realizes it's, it's such a risky thing for him because if he loses, guess what, buddy? He's never going to make that much money again. So I get it. Wilder is, I guess you could say he's being smart. Uh, but in the same time, token, he in the same time he's a uh, he's kind of like I guess annoying his boxing his fans, you know. He's and he's annoying us as boxing fans because now we all feel like okay, he's ducking another guy. He's ducking another guy, you know. When really it's maybe more the fact that he just wants to make as much money because he knows it's a very risky fight for him. But. Regardless, I just wish Wilder would like just do a. I wish Wilder would do a 360, and just fight like fight everyone, because regardless whether he fights Anthony Joshua or not, he's always gonna have that record that we don't really respect, right? That's why I wish he would do like a 360 and like just fight his next ten opponents, nothing but guys that we could that are respectable. You know, and just defend his belts against them and, you know, not just Joshua, everyone, all the top guys. I wish he would do that. People would have a lot of, you know, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Wilder is going to go down as an all-time great. I don't I don't think so when it's all said and done. Again, Wilder's really at the end of his career already because, again, he's been pro for nine years. Even though he's, he's what, 32? He's young. But in four years, he'll be, what, 36? At that point, he would be pro 13 years. And at that point, you know, once you're 36, you're at that age where it's time it, retirement's coming for boxers. You know, obviously, boxers, they have a, a time limit. You know, you're in your at your best as a boxer in your 20s, possibly even your early 30s. But once you get to, like, that mid-30s, that's when it's time to go, you know. So, while there's at that stage of his career, uh... So yeah, he probably won't be around too long, too much longer. Maybe two, three years maximum. But yeah, man, I just, I just want Wilder to stop embarrassing us all as American boxing fans. And if you guys watched this whole video, I know this video went on so long. I could talk. Sometimes I talk and I never stop talking. But yeah, if you guys watched the whole video from start to finish, I do appreciate. I do appreciate it. So if you actually watched the whole thing, I appreciate it, fam. I appreciate it, son. And yeah, that's all I have to say, really. Uh, please subscribe. Please like the video. Share the video if you can. That would be nice. And thumbs up the video because, you know, I get nothing but thumbs down. I get nothing but thumbs down. I don't know. People like thumbing down my videos. I don't know. So try and thumb up my videos, man. I would really appreciate that. And yeah, I'm going to start being more active, you know. I haven't really been active on my channel, but I said... And I'm a man of my word. I said I was going to be more active, and I will be more active. So you can expect more videos from your boy, McGregor. I'm out.